family, welcome back to another video. Today I'm here with Andrew, which is an expert in pain management and we're gonna teach you eight exercises to fix low back pain. Let's go through a series of eight movements to help your low back get some increased blood flow, movement, and feeling much better. Let's start off with the QL massage. QL means quadratus lumborum. It's a muscle in the lower back on either side of the spine, right above your hip crest and right below your rib. There's little space. You're gonna take a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. Tennis ball is preferable, nice and squishy. You're gonna lie down on the floor. You're not gonna feel anything yet. You start with this leg straight on the side of the ball. You're gonna tuck your pelvis posteriorly. So you're rounding your back into all that hollow position. Then you're going to use this leg to roll your hip over to the side. So you're rolling onto the ball. Keep that foot down, do a little bridge. There you go, like that. You feeling that? A little bit? If you're not feeling anything, then you can bring this knee to your chest. So bend this, this knee. There you go, left knee to the chest. Oh, that was intense, there it is. <laughs> then you can grab onto the knee and you can kind of roll up toward the knee. So you're flexing, crunching up for the knee. That's just rounding your back into the ball. And you're gonna breathe in this position. So whichever variation you choose, you wanna breathe slowly in through the nose, out through the nose or the mouth, whatever you prefer. Nice and controlled. You don't wanna put so much pressure in there. You're tensing up and guarding. Next movement's gonna be a pelvic tilt. Let's start teaching in a quadruped position. This isn't a cat-cow. We're gonna work on, whoa, that is wild. We're gonna work on keeping the movement isolated to the lower back. So go ahead and do a pelvic tilt like you were. Good, you can see his thoracic spine's moving a little bit. Go ahead and into flexion. But there it is, there we go. So we wanna work on the pelvic tilt in a nice, slow, controlled range of motion where the thoracic spine isn't moving. So let it move again. Yep, that's a big movement. This is a great movement, really awesome. We're gonna to try to teach you how to dissociate the two and only focus on the pelvis moving versus the thoracic spine. You could also do the same thing where you don't move your pelvis and only move your thoracic spine. There you go. We didn't prompt this before the video. This is great, good job. Now, let's take this to a applicable position. Can you get up there? Oh, here, I'll spot you, bro. <laughs> now, let's take that pelvic tilt to hanging. You're all probably very good at doing the hollow position, getting into flexion but how is your extension? Now let's try to isolate again. The thoracic spine doesn't move. Yep, just the pelvis. Can you also try to keep your legs straight down? Oh, there's the, there it is. Now we're isolating just the pelvis. So the hips are rotating, the lower back is moving, thoracic isn't, legs aren't. You could also take this to a push-up position. Dude, if you wanna cut it, that's fine. Take this to a push-up position. Same thing, let's get a little bit higher there. I know a little bit different than what you're thinking. You're gonna tuck posteriorly, good. And then anteriorly. Again, you're working on keeping this still. We're gonna keep those knees still. Don't let the knees bend. There it is. And then it should eventually, we wanna work on it looking something like this. The next movement is gonna be a butt walk. We're doing a little butt walk race. The goal here is to use the pelvis to drive you forward and we're gonna be activating the lower, I gave up there, he was gonna win. We're gonna be activating the lower back QL muscles here, uh, primarily. Obviously other things are gonna be working, but again, if the lower back's an issue, we wanna get this moving. This can be a little bit scary if you've had any strains recently. So what you might wanna do is bend the knees. You're gonna lift that hip up, keep this shape and walk forward. Good, other side and walk forward. Bending the knees helps to take some of the hamstrings out of it so you don't have so much tension on the lower back. Straightening the legs obviously makes it more difficult. And then if you really want to step it up, then you go backward. Next move is going to be a bridge. Simple exercise. Many of you probably already done it. We're going to do this to get some movement in the hips. The lower back somewhat involved here. And what a lot of people like to do in the bridge is arch. So come up with a big arch in the lower back. Hey, you can't even do it because you spend so much time doing planches and stuff. <laughs> arch in the lower back. Slowly hold it. Hold it at the top. There you go. Bridge all the way up. There it is, that's what a lot of people like to do. We want to hold a posterior tilt at the top. We want the spine to kind of move as one unit. So if you can imagine this being a giant block of concrete and it's moving as one section, all the movement's coming from the hip joints there. Do 20, 40, 50 repetitions of this. Get everything nice and warm. No, it's slow. Go slow with it, not you were going all fast. Go slow, just like that. 
to get some blood flow in the area, get some strength and stability in the hips. Then, single leg. Bring this one back. I like to do the knee bent. It helps to keep the lower back in a flex position. Then you're gonna drive yourself up. Good. Think about driving that knee to the ceiling. There it is. Good. And we want to prevent the pelvis from tilting from side to side. Yep, you're, this side will usually drop down like that. You wanna keep that nice and level through the whole motion. Get strong. Next one, a tabletop abdominal crunch. We can do this with or without a band. With the band, great for Gabo because he's strong. You're gonna get your knees 90 degree position. You're gonna get the arms straight out over the top of you with a little bit of tension on the band or none. Then you're going to flex at the upper abdominals. So you're doing a thoracic anterior tilt and holding that position for five to 10 breaths. Nice and controlled. The goal is to just get the abdominals fired up here. The other important thing here, we wanna keep a small arch in lower back. So imagine there's a tiny little bug under your lower back and you're not pressing into a hollow position here. We want a slight arch. Doesn't mean a big arch. I don't wanna be able to put my whole hand under here. No good. But a tiny, tiny little space, holding that position as you roll up. It's actually going to get the abdominals fired in a little bit different way than a lot of you are going to be used to. And again, you can toss this band aside. You're like, no way, that's not, not good. You can do the same thing. You can put your hands against the legs and use your legs as resistance. So you're posing one another, legs driving into the hands. You're going to flex up and push the arms in, hold that there, breathe, hold, hold, hold. Pulling the knees into the hands, hands into the knees. There it is, there's that hollow. One, two, three. Oh, I thought you were gonna jump, that's mean. Next one is going to be hip hikes. So one of you is gonna wanna come over to the front here. You're gonna hike the hip up and down. What's the thing you were doing earlier when we tried this? Yeah, you're kind of bringing the front of the hip diagonally. What we wanna do is actually point the feet and you wanna think about sliding the feet along one another. So you can see the one is getting longer than the other one. You're sliding up and down. If you come up to here, it's actually going to be the lower back that is creating this movement. The QLs are tightening up, the obliques, hip flexors, moving everything up and down. Now again, we wanna isolate so the, the rib cage isn't moving here, your lats aren't getting involved, you're keeping tension up top, but it's all coming from the hips. You're gonna keep pressing those feet together the entire time to make it easier. The last movement is gonna be a stretch for that QL muscle in the lower back. This is pretty intense, why it's at the end. What you're gonna do, stand next to a pole. You're gonna put that right foot forward. The other foot's gonna go behind you, yep. So the foot that's away from the pole is gonna go behind you, the other one's gonna cross over. You're gonna take this top hand, keep it about shoulder height. Then you're going to drop your hip out to the side. So creating like a bow, like a bow and arrow here. You're gonna be driving the hip. Gabo likes to use the bottom hand to push himself to get some more tension. We're gonna be stretching the hell out of the lower back here. From this, you can work on twisting the pelvis into different positions. If you feel this a lot in the lat or the obliques, you can change the position of your hand. See if dropping it lower helps to reduce the lat so you can isolate more of the lower back. You may even feel this in the TFL on the side of the hip. It goes and turns into the IT band. So it's gonna hit a big stretch. It may even get some of the peroneals down here on the outside of the lower leg. This stuff can feel really good for the back. Gabo just did some pretty intense variations. Some of these things you may feel a little bit, bit of discomfort with, which is okay. It's really fine to have some discomfort. However, if you find that doing any of these movements is increasing your pain during or after it, then you either need to reduce the range of motion, reduce the number of repetitions, or reduce the intensity of it, or avoid it altogether. Be safe, family. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment down below what else would you like to see on this channel. If you want to follow Andrew's work and Andrew's program, all the information is going to be down in the description. That's it. We'll see you next time. Peace out.